Hey, what's up, Husker Nation? My name is Logan Merrick, and this is Husker Central. Is the offensive line bad? That's what we're covering today in this episode. All right, so I get in the comments all the time that we need a new offensive line, or the offensive line is not good, or Donovan Riola, the uh, offensive line coach, is not a good coach, blah, 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 blah. And I have multiple times in multiple videos talked about how they're not as bad as you think. Now, I have been hard on different members of the offensive line, but over this whole season, they got better with every game. And I'm going to show you each one of them. I'm going to show you their PFF grades, so that pro football focus grade. And we're going to we're going to go into each one of those. Turner Corcoran is the only one I did not put in put on here. Turner Corcoran had some very bad grades. He's not he's not played well. And then Teddy Prohaska ultimately took over for him. I've been very hard on Teddy. Um, he grades out better than I thought. And as I watched some of the games, uh, I went back and rewatched all the games. I'm going to have 10 different clips um, specifically to kind of point out some specific things. I can't, we're going to be here all day if I just go through every single game. And so I got the Iowa game, I got some of the Colorado game, and then I got one clip from the Illinois game. And each one being a different quarterback, uh, being Jeff Sims, uh, Chubba Purdy. And then one clip of Heinrich Harburg. Now, the quarterbacks struggled all year. We know this. We 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 had 31 total uh, uh, turnovers to lead college football, and I think it's somewhere between 26 or 28 of those came on the quarterback. Now I've rewatched the games, and I just like I said, I brought out 10 different clips. Now let's go ahead and let's look at those PFF grades. If you're not familiar with PFF, um, I like PFF. If you're new to this channel, and I, I'll have a clip. Um, uh, a card right here. You can click on this for later uh, to watch how PFF grading works. But ultimately, I like it better than statistics because statistics, statistics can ultimately lie. What PFF does is they have graders who watch each and every single position and they're going to grade them out and they're going to grade them out going, all right, from an offensive line standpoint, do they get beat immediately? Do they hold their block? And then ultimately, like the quarterback held the ball too long or there was great coverage downfield, blah, 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 blah. There's a lot of different things that kind of play out. And so from an offensive line perspective, they're looking at and going, all right, how well did the offensive line run block, pass block, those types of things. And so they they take all of that into account. And each one of those uh, snaps gets graded and then it gets graded on a scale of one to a hundred and, and so, and so on it, but it, anyway, Again, click on that video so you can kind of see more in depth. So this is Teddy Prohaska. Now, did not have a good game against Illinois, as you can see by that 28.3. Uh, did not do bad in Iowa, 55.3. So a 50, that 55 is pretty average. It's serviceable, okay? Anything that's going to be in the 80s, 90s, Grading out for an entire year, by the way, if you have a, a full grade of that, which over here you'll see his grade for the year was a 66.9. It's in the green, which means it's pretty good. Uh, it's above average. All right. That last year's 49.5 is not good. Um, it's below average. And then if you see anything in the red, it just means it's terrible. So he had a great game in the 90s against Louisiana Tech. That's Louisiana Tech. Uh, again, Iowa, pretty average, pretty serviceable. So Overall, that overall grade for Teddy Prohaska was actually higher than I thought. Now, where did Teddy not do well? And the O-line as a whole not do well. Let's just go ahead and get that off the table. They would have, at the absolute worst time, a false start, some sort of penalty, and usually in two times, Two times I have it here. Uh, Illinois, third and one. Teddy Prohaska has a false start on a third and one. And ultimately, we had to punt. Wisconsin, in overtime, false start. Teddy Prohaska, once again. And so, where does the where does the offensive line mostly struggle? Or their biggest hurdle is terrible penalties at the worst time. It's like their brain goes somewhere else. It is not, as we're going to see, necessarily pass blocking or run blocking because you just saw that for that for Teddy Prohaska for that one it's pretty good it's serviceable it's pretty decent and for the year it was well okay so 
where they need to get better 100% is penalties. Ben Scott, I love the fact that he's fiery. Uh, he reminds me a lot of uh, Ryan Jensen. The downside is, is sometimes he can have some extracurriculars after the fact and then have a terrible penalty. So let's just put that on the table. We're not talking about penalties, but that's where they need to get better, period. So let's go to Bryce Benhart, our, without a doubt, the best offensive lineman that we have. And as you can see, he grades out as a 70 overall for the entire year. His worst game, Michigan State, did pretty well against Iowa, did really well. Um, Northwestern, I mean, he you can see he's got a lot of green grades, did really, did very serviceable or better. And you can tell over here for these career grades um, how he didn't do well 2020, 2021. He's kind of average, gets better in 2022, and then just did really well this year, which was really surprising. Let's look at Newelli. So Newelli is serviceable. Okay. His worst game also is Michigan State. So there's that, but not terrible, not great, but doing okay. Let's look at Piper. Now, Ethan Piper got hurt in the Northwestern game, and so he was out for the rest of the year. You are going to see, I'm going to point out to you, I'm going to point out to you, Ethan Piper struggled, struggled against Colorado, and that grade proves out right here. Um, if we go back to this grade right here, for a 49, he did not do well. And, and one of those, I'm going, to, I'm going to point out to you, and it's and one of the things is something that the offensive line got better at as the year went on, but stunk at the start of the year, and it really showed. So who else do we got? So there's Piper. Here's Justin Evans Jenkins, his grades. He graded out as a 61.3, and as a freshman, that's, I think he's a freshman, freshman or sophomore. Uh, this is his first year getting to really play. As you can see, he only had 23 sets. That's, this, is, this is good. Like, to start out for your first year, this is pretty decent. Um, worst game it looks like is Michigan State. Again, why that is, I don't know. So we've got three guys. Their worst game was Michigan State. And then the last one has been Scott. And he struggled uh, some at Colorado. Um, that was his lowest grade. And you can kind of see it. So when we when I go to these clips, you'll kind of see, you won't necessarily see Ben Scott struggle. You'll see Ethan Piper. But re-watching that Colorado game, what I noticed the most, Minnesota, Colorado, the run game, Minnesota was okay. Colorado, it was really bad, really bad. And it's like Colorado knew that they wanted to force, just like everybody, they wanted to force us to throw the ball. Why? Because we don't have really much of a quarterback game. And, and our run game was the best thing that we did. So what they do, well, they just put all the men in the box. And so... But what happened was, is you begin to see through over the year, every game they get better and better at run blocking. It becomes the best thing that we do. And you can see that as each game goes on, they get stronger and stronger. Pass blocking, actually, they all did really well. And I think that was the thing that surprised me the most as I rewatched it, all these games, knowing the outcome, I'm focused on the offensive line. I was really surprised at the pass blocking. Because I thought for sure they might have struggled, but no, a lot of the times our quarterbacks held the ball or they would run into a sack or run into protection or whatever. Anyway, let's just go ahead and dive into it. This first play um, is actually let's let's start from let's start from Colorado. So I got to go backwards here. Um, Ethan Piper right here on this one. Ethan Piper misses. Let me back up. Sorry. He misses a a uh, a pulling block right here. So if you watch it, let's just back that up. Remember what I said? They struggled this, and I remember doing a call in to 1620 saying, I cannot stand the fact that we keep calling these pulling blockers, uh, pulling guards. So watch him right here. He completely misses. Defender sees him. Coming off the edge, not even close, and 
ultimately it forces uh, Gabe Irvin, I think that's Gabe Irvin, back inside and for really just minimal gain. So I absolutely despise at the beginning of the year that pulling guard, because we'll see it again, Noelle does the same thing, that pulling guard, just it, it was not working. And I was like, can we stop doing that? But they got better as the year went on. Surprisingly enough, I was like, wow, okay. So, so there's that one. I, I want to start with kind of some of the, the things where I'm like, okay, this was not good, but better. Um, let's look at what I think the the offensive line keeps getting a bad rap on, and it's the tight ends that actually weren't weren't great. And I believe it's right here. Yeah, the tight end gets uh gets blown up here. Let me pause this and go bigger so you guys can get a little bit bigger there. All right, so let's slow this back down. And if you watch, fullback goes out, goes to pick up his block, but the tight end is already getting beat. I think that's Nate Borkature. He's already getting beat. He gets blown up, and then ultimately, again, in the backfield. Yep, that's uh, Borkature, I believe. So let's just see it again in real time. And this happens multiple times throughout the year where our tight ends, you think, you would think it's the offensive line, but it's not. It's the tight end. And I've got a couple of more clips where you're going to see it's the tight ends getting, getting blown up. Let's look at another Colorado clip. Uh, Nuelli right here. Also, pulling guard misses. Let's go back. Now, remember, this is the second game of the season. So I might be, you, I'm telling you, the offensive line is not that bad, but I want you to see Noelle goes and pulls, completely whiffs, and then Ramir Johnson gets tackled for no gain. So let's watch it again in real time. Well, he pulls, whiffs, tackle for loss. What was the one thing that Colorado struggled with in the first week? Run defense. What was the one thing that they did really well in this game? Run defense. All right. But now I want to show you pass blocking that Colorado game. Okay. Watch this right here. All day long. All day. And they bring a blitz. No, they don't. Maybe they do. I can't remember. Hold on. Let me go back. Did they bring a blitz? No. No blitz. But I want you to look at the pass protection. Look at this. Let's let it pay, play. A little pancake block right there. I mean, look at this. Jeff Sims has all day, and he ultimately completes that pass to Nate Borkature on a third down and six. That's great pass protection. Great pass protection. Now, I want to show you another incredible pass protection that usually for Nebraska does not go well. And that's when we're at Illinois and we're on the half yard line. Why are we on the half yard line? Well, we stopped them. This is where, if you'll recall, we stopped Illinois on their opening drive on the one yard line. Then Teddy Prohaska, right before this play, Teddy Prohaska has a false start again, and then he has he has more, but this one doesn't hurt you because you're with you're already on the one yard line, so it just gets backed up really to nothing. But I want you to see right here. This is such good pass protection against Illinois in our own end zone. Look at this. I'm just going to pause that. Look at that. Everybody has got everyone locked up. And Harburg hits Marcus Washington for a for a beautiful pass. I'm gonna play this one more time so you can just kind of see it. See it in real time. Look at that. Drops back in. Here's the other thing, too. Something else that needs to be said. When the quarterbacks played in rhythm, when they drop back on that third step, hit it. Man, I'm because I've got another one where they hit it. When they hit it in rhythm, everything flowed perfectly. But what happens is, is we're going to see in just a few minutes, 
it doesn't always work that way. Now, I don't want you to think that I'm picking on um, Chubba Purdy either. It's just there were more of those uh, Iowa where I feel like the offensive line did a pretty pretty decent job and they're getting a bad rap. And a lot of it was on kind of Chubba, but all the quarterbacks did it. Harburg did it a lot. Um, Jeff Sims, if he wasn't fumbling the ball, which he did a ton in uh, in Colorado, again, none of that is on the offensive line. But I feel like we look at the offensive line and blame them for a lot of bad play that's going on around them that they can't help. All right, so let's go to the Iowa stuff because that's what we're up to. So I want you to see this. Let's pull this up. Now, you see Borkature comes in motion right there, right? Now watch. He's going to fully, completely miss that defender right there. That's two fullbacks. I mean, two tight ends, by the way. Working. It's supposed to be pass blocking. And Borkature completely misses him. Doesn't help out his tight end. And ultimately, there's a blitz. Now that... Many times, people are going to blame the offensive line for that. But if you look, the rest of the offensive line is doing their job. That's a great pocket right there. But when you have someone miss their block, that's what happens. Let's go to the next one. Uh, the next one is... This is on Chubba Purdy. Snap. Well, let's just pause it. Why is Chuba running to his left? There's no, there's no, there's no reason. Stand tall. Just stand tall, man. He has right here to your right. He actually has um, Billy Kemp. And then what does he do? But he runs right into the defenders. And then he's got a, he's running all around. Every, then now receivers are in scramble mode and they're trying to find. So again, I want to go back. This is not on the offensive line. Again, I'm not picking on Chuba. I thought Chuba was the best quarterback we had by far, by far. And I hate the fact that he's gone because I, I that he's entered the transfer portal. But this is not on the offensive line. All right, let's go to the next one. This next one shows you what it looks like when, when the quarterbacks go in rhythm. Look at this. One, two, fire. Great little five-yard pickup right there. And I just want to go back. I want you guys to see the offensive line. Look at that. One, two, step, throw. Beautiful. Now, let's go to, I got one, I got two more, two more. This one, this one, I believe, is kind of everybody. I, th I think it's receivers, quarterback, offensive line. Everybody just didn't didn't do well. But if you'll notice, right here, it's not bad. Chubb begins to kind of run to his right, stops, kind of trips, and then just throws it in the ground. So let's go back. Some of it, I think Chubba panics, and he slips right here. But I think if he stays in the pocket, now, there's nowhere to throw the ball. If you notice, everyone's kind of locked up. But if he turns right here and he hits his man in the flat, his running back in the flat, which I'm pretty sure there's somebody there, but I'm just trying to... Or he can just throw it away, which he throws it into the ground. Yeah, so there's a defender right there, a linebacker on Anthony Grant. But so I think all around on that one's just a bad blown up play. Like there's just good defense by Iowa. Now this last one, I want you to see, this is a blitz, a blitz pickup by the offensive line. And it's beautiful. It is absolutely beautiful. Third and 11. They bring the blitz. Look at this. When you see that, Beautiful. Chubba steps back, stands tall, throws it. Alex Bullock right there. Let's watch it again. 
Now I realize you can say you're cherry picking stuff. Well, I, again, I'm trying to give you guys just specific plays that last year, I think our offensive line would struggle and they're, and I mean, they got better as, as the year went on, they got much better and the grades prove that. The grades absolutely show you that the offensive line is not as bad as you think. They're a very certain. Are, are they dominating people? No, they're not dominating people. But everybody, I don't know. We don't know about Ethan Piper. I, he might not come back. We don't know. Uh, Matt Rule said in his press conference he's given he's given Ethan some time. But for the most part, everybody's coming back. And I think seeing that they're all growing. They're getting, they got better with every game. You saw that struggle from Colorado with that pulling guard. And then when, when you see that pulling guard later on in the Iowa game, which I didn't show any of those, it was, man, they were hitting. They were getting chunks of yardage. So they're getting better. So when people say the offensive line is terrible, we need a new offensive line coach. No, like they're, they're getting better and their, their PFF grades show you that. And these clips show you, man, they're picking up blitzes. When the quarterbacks move in rhythm, and play in rhythm when the tight ends, the tight ends are should be picking up blocks, which that's another thing. Our, our receivers and our tight ends never really did a great job. I hate the wide receiver screen. My God, I hate that wide. It never went anywhere. But the offensive line is serviceable. Again, am I saying that they're gonna that they're dominating people? No, they're not dominating people, but they're not as bad as everyone in the comment section wants to think or say. And I think this next year with Bryce Benhart coming back, which I'm excited about. I think you're going to see that them take an, another step and, and be just as good, if not better. As long as you have, again, everyone, it, this is a team sport for a reason. If you have the quarterback doing his job, if you have the receivers doing their job, you have the tight ends doing their job, this thing moves the way that it should. But if you hold the ball too long, or if you run outside the pocket, things happen. Now, again, where were they terrible? Bad penalties at bad times. They have to get that cleaned up. But outside of that, man, they got better as the year went on. So no, to answer the question, is the offensive line bad? No. Are they great? Not necessarily. But I think they're going to be pretty darn good this next year. That being said, ignore my cat who just decided to jump up here. Thanks so much for your time. If you got something out of this, would you like this? Would you share it with somebody? If you haven't yet, would you consider subscribing? Really appreciate you guys. Have a great rest of your day. We'll see you later. Oh, before I go, go Big Red. Peace out.